Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this, our second day of the conference. Our theme today is Outward Focused. And I am joined by Anne Squirrel, who will be leading the responses for us and will also be reading for us from today's lesson. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Christ be our focus. Christ be our vision. Our opening song is from the choir of St. Leonard Stratton, God so of the world, from Stainless Crucifixion. And you will notice a photo montage of the children's church as they sing. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 18, verses 17 to 30. He reached down from on high and took me. He drew me out of the mighty waters. 
He delivered me from my strong enemy, from foes that were too mighty for me. They came upon me in the day of my trouble. But the Lord was my upholder. He brought me out into a place of liberty. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me after my righteous dealing. According to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. Because I had kept the ways of the Lord, and had not gone wickedly away from my God. For I had an eye to all his laws, and did not cast out his commandments from me. I was also wholehearted before him, and kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord rewarded me after my righteous dealing. and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the faithful you show yourself faithful. With the true you show yourself true. With the pure you show yourself pure. But with the crooked you show yourself perverse. For you will save a lowly people and bring down the high looks of the proud. You also shall light my candle. The Lord my God shall make my darkness to be bright. By your help I shall run at an enemy host. With the help of my God I can leap over a wall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen. Yet, you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our reflection today is brought to us by Bishop Cleopas, the Anglican Bishop of Matabiti Land. Uh, in John chapter 3, verse 11 to 17, our Lord Jesus Christ speaks about ascending to heaven and that no one ascends to heaven unless he descended from heaven. This is about the outward looking. It is outward focus. The rebirth 
of this event begins in heaven itself, where God sent his own son from heaven to the world. And this is a world with so many challenges, and he is to experience what happens in the world coming from heaven. This is like someone who is in a house. I happen to have been brought up in an African context where when you talk of shelter, you are actually talking of a round over. And you can be protected from the wind, from rain, from all weather conditions when you are in that round over. But you can give instructions through the window. You can see what's happening outside. You can communicate with that, the, the, the person outside the round over when you are in the comfort uh, of the round over. And when you, you have the choice to either remain in the round over or come out in the round over and live the life of the very person you have been instructing, the very person you have been communicating to with. We too, in our own time, in our own context, need to come out of our comfort zones, come out from the familiar to go out to the unfamiliar, to be able to understand that unless we take a risk, there are a lot of things that will, even in our ministry and in our faith, suffer. When I first heard of the depiction of ozone layer when I was at secondary school, it was just something I never thought with time we will eventually experience. But we needed to come out of our comfort zone to realize that we need to reach out to be outward looking. The opposite of outward is inward. The more we look at things in the inward type of focus, we lose so much in that there is no growth, there is no pioneering, there is no strategizing, and only when we are, we are hit by something, we then begin to be outward, and sometimes it's too late. We have experienced that with global warming, that we have been always looking, thinking and focusing in an inward way instead of outward uh, focus. So this is a challenge when it comes to global warming, but also with it, it comes to um, relationships. We need to develop a relational culture with people of the Christian faith, but also with those who are outside the Christian faith in order to tackle some global issues that can bring about peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ comes to the world to bring salvation and peace, but not without moving from the center, from the heavenly castle to earth, to experience what we exactly experience. We have made money, yes, at the expense of the environment, but now we know that why money is good, but life is better. I thank you. Our canticle, the Benedictus, will be sung this morning by the Marble Choir. Let's
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here as we continue on our theme of Christ-centered and outwardly focused. We give thanks today for our church throughout the world. We give you thanks for archbishops, for our bishops in this diocese, and for our bishops in our link dioceses of St. Patrick. As we pray for our diocese here of Southwark, we give thanks for the parishes within our diocese, and we pray today especially for Betchworth and Buckland United Benefice, St. Michael Betchworth, and St. Mary the Virgin Buckland. For Anna Moore, the rector, David Eaton has permission to officiate, and for all God's people there. In the wider Anglican communion, we pray for the bishops, priests, and people of the indigenous spiritual ministry of Mishamikuish, the Anglican Church of Canada, Rupert's Land Province. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray today for those in any kind of need. For those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Those in hospitals and hospices. And those who are sick at home. And for those who care for them. And we pray today especially for the medical teams and for the work of our National Health Service. And as we call to mind those who have asked us to pray for them, those for whom we ought to pray, we ask, O oh, gracious God, that those in need would know your healing, your wholeness, your comfort, and your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died, in the faith of Christ, those whose faith was known only to you, those who have died this past night all alone, or will die today all alone, and for those whose anniversaries of death occur at this time, that they would continue to rest in peace and rise in glory, and for those who mourn their loss, that they will be comforted too. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we spend a moment as we bring our own prayers to you this day. Prayers of petition, of adoration, of thanksgiving. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Transforming God, open our hearts to your love, our eyes to your word, our minds to your word, our lives to your grace, that Christ may be at the center 
and our focus always on you, for now and for eternity. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory.